Little Leaders, Bold Women in Black History by Vashti Harrison. Read by Dad. Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis's liter literary skills were apparent early on. She published her first story when she was only about 14 years old. For anyone, this would be a major feat, but Phyllis was a slave, so it was truly unique. Her original name, date of birth, and exact birthplace are all unknown. When she was only eight years old, she was taken from her home in Africa and sold to a trader, then transported across the Atlantic to Boston, Massachusetts, aboard a ship named the Phyllis. She was then resold to a man named John Wheatley, who purchased her to be a personal servant to his wife. The Wheatley soon recognized her intelligence and began to nurture it. They taught Phyllis everything from theology to mythology, an education that was rare for a woman and nearly unheard of for a woman of color. With the family's backing, she traveled to England to publish her first book, poems on various subjects, religious and moral. She was the first African-American woman poet to be, ever to be published. She corresponded with George Washington and the famous French writer and philosopher Voltaire, who called her a master of English verse. Her work was so powerful that abolitionists used it as an example of the intelligence and promise of black people. In 1767, she was emancipated. Unfortunately, she struggled financially and lived in poverty for the rest of her life. She received a great deal of praise during her lifetime, but validation from white society was integral to her success, and it never came. She continued writing, but was not able to find a publisher in America. Her natural talent and body of work live on as fundamental contributions to American literature.